HyperPi 2 for the PC? No way! Yes way. And in this video, we're going to show you how to set it all up. The cool thing about the PC, it has way less lag than a Raspberry Pi 3, and it can play way more systems. So things like Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, GameCube are possible to emulate and use with this front end. And besides all that, besides all the customization, besides the, the less lag, did I mention that it's free? All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and click on the first part one and just, I use 7-zip, I just extract here and then it'll just extract the whole folder there. HyperPy, HyperPy PC, and here you go. Um, now, you're not done. You def I have this on my D drive. You definitely wanna put this on an H drive. So put it on an external hard drive or something like that. And then uh, go to your, um, it's the uh, disk manager. So let's just do this, create and format hard disk. Let's go here, I think we can get to it from here. Yo, here we are. Yeah, so here we go. Okay, so I added my Seagate. And right now my Seagate's F. What I would do is just right click and do change letter or pass, change, and then I just change this to H, okay? That's what you definitely wanna do for this. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to change all your file paths and I don't recommend doing that. So you do wanna put it on this external hard drive or on any hard drive and relabel it the H drive. So you have to put it in an alphabetical order. And as you can see, I already have a C and a D drive. That's pretty standard for your primary and your secondary. Um, so what you need to do is change it to, right now it's F, I would change it to H. I ended up not setting mine up this way. I elected a different way, but that's what you should do if you're watching this video. Um, other things to note is r this is based on rocket launcher, rocket launcher, and then go to settings or I'm sorry, rocket launcher UI. And this is where you're going to get all of your like controller settings, things like that is all going to be done through rocket launcher. Now I can tell you right now, I'm not going to be playing with rocket launcher at all. Um, you don't have to, but certain, this looks really crazy, right? But you know, settings, where things are, the emulators you're using, your key mappers, your keys for your joysticks, things like that. Typically that's all done through Rocket Launcher. A lot of that's already set up for you, but I'm just letting you know that that's where Rocket Launcher is. It's in the Rocket Launcher, Rocket Launcher UI folder. That's how you get to it. Everything we're gonna be doing today is just through a track mode here, attract, attract.exe. You can also just go right here to uh, launch HyperPi 2. So what I've done is I already have a, I have an external hard drive that already has all my ROMs and BIOSes on it. Go on Google, you can find ROMs on Google, just search Google, search the system and the ROMs. There's also ROM packs available all over the internet. Um, Arcade Punks has some, many different websites have them. You'd have to go to one of those websites and get these packs. Uh, but for example, my SNES pack, which is what we're gonna be doing this whole video on, SNES, it has all the games, all 700 games in a zip file. And then it also has the box art for all those games. It has the cart art for all those games. It has the flyer, there's no flyer, art. it has no marquee, but it has the video snaps for all of that, which is the video previews. And uh, it has wheel artwork for a track mode as well. Okay? So there you go. And uh, once you have these packs, all you need to do is drop them into ROMs here. So you can see I've already transferred over my Atari 2600, my NES, and my SNES. If I wanna do PlayStation, PSP Mini, Sega Saturn, any of those other games, Nintendo 64, it's just a copy and paste. I just drag this whole folder over to there, and I'm done, okay? So that's all I've done so far, is I've, I've unrard the HyperPi PC, I've put it on the right directory, and you've added the ROMs to it, and then now we can launch. Okay, so here I am. I'm in the HyperPi, and here's the main menu here. And now here's where you need a keyboard because you have to hit tab and this is where you can edit your track mode controls 
you know, to your joystick or whatever. This is not in-game controls. These are controls that you will be using while in a track mode, while in this presentation mode that we're in right now. The other thing is if you go to like Atari 5200, like where this blue line is right now, you might notice it says H drive HyperPi ROM slash Atari. The executable is H drive. This is why you need to change your hard drive to H because it's all pre-configured to run off of your H drive directly off of a folder called HyperPi PC. Within that folder is a folder called ROMs. Within that ROM folder is your different artworks, whatever it is, corresponding to these directories. So what I've done is, uh, well, I haven't done it yet for Atari, but what I've done is I literally go into here, I go over to here to H and I change it to my D drive because mine's all on my D drive. So I literally have to go into each one of these and change it to my D drive. And got to do that for every single one. And so that's kind of a drag. Now, I'm not trying to set this all up on my hard drive right now, so I'm just doing it for this video. So doing it for this video, I'm doing it the, long, the actually the hard way. But some of you might elect to do it this way because you don't want to put it on an external hard drive. And I totally get that. Um, so it's just this easy, just change out the D. Um, it's actually not that easy. And then I think that's it, right? So D drive, you did your drive, executive mode. Okay, cool. So that's all done. I'm just gonna go back now and then escape on my keyboard. And now my Atari 2600 should work. So let's go back. Okay, we're already in it. So what do we go? We gotta go to consoles, click into consoles. And then we should be able to go up to Atari 2600. And within Atari 2600, we should have, yeah, 641 games. And here they all are with video snaps, box art, all that good stuff, logos, look at that. Uh, you can see the logo in the upper left, all set up, ready to go. I've also done this with Super Nintendo and Nintendo so far, so Nintendo. Okay, so Nintendo, for example, I haven't actually changed the directories yet. That's why it's not working. And But Super Nintendo, I did. So Super Nintendo, here they are. They're all working good. Now something really cool about HyperPie is you can change the view. This is one of my favorite things. So here's grid view, change it again. We can go to, I think vertical view is next. Just give this a second. Okay, no, it's cover flow. So cover flow, look at that, uh. Look at that, uh, really nice. Hit it again. We're gonna go to another view here. All right, we got cover full flat. Okay, hit it again. We're gonna try a different view here. Right now I'm hitting Y on my Xbox 360 controller. We have our our cart art. I really like this one. How cool is this? Especially if you grew up with Super Nintendo. I mean, how cool is it to see the Joan Mac 2? Nice. Hit it again. You got our horizontal view on the bottom there, Jurassic Park. Great game. Hit it again. What do we got next? I think we got vertical scroll next. No, we got another snazzy view. The thing about snazzy is it's the box art and then this background photo has changed right here. Let's go ahead and switch it again. Now we have that vertical. Killer Instinct, for example, nice. Hit it again. We have a vertical view, but a little different of a way it selects the games. Nice. Another one, we're back to the default view. All right, so remember Nintendo wasn't working, so what we would want to do is hit tab, emulators, go down to Nintendo, and we just have to change those hard drives again. Remember, that it's on our H drive, but remember, I'm running this on my D drive. And now I'll go back, and uh, you can also change the view here, you know, where you're going through your hacks and things like that. Watch, I can change it. And then now I have a grid view of my, of my large, you know, console, arcade, PC games, handhelds. I click it again, go to, uh, I think it'll be like a, the cover flow. Okay, look at that. How cool is that? Cover flow. I really like cover flow. How cool is that? Nice. Cody. Let's go to consoles, right? Console cover flow. Oh, I hit it again. <laughs> I hit my view. Then you have this mode. You have the horizontal view. How cool is this? Right? So we just go consoles and then into back here. Okay, this view hasn't changed either. So we can go console, console view on these. So many, oh, look at that, uh. Pretty cool. How cool is that? Atari 20.
600. And remember, we set this all up, so we go inside, and there we go. So you could do like hybrid views. You can have some views on cover flow, some views on the traditional, you know, like this one right now is on, on the cover flow. We can switch around, set a match view, horizontal wheel. Look at that, uh, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2. Pretty cool. Wow, it even has Wii on there. Nice. Because you can actually run Wii on Rocket Launcher and through a computer, no problem. Really cool stuff. So we can go from here, though, back to what systems do we actually have? We have Super Nintendo. Where's my Super Nintendo at? Sega, Sega, Neo, Geo, Wii, GameCube, Nintendo 64. There we go. We're getting there. Super Nintendo. Click in. And there we are. Oh, that's right. We just fixed Nintendo. You might be wondering, like, Drew, you just did Nintendo. Let's make sure it's working. Okay. Went backwards. We want to go forwards, actually. And there you go. Now, remember, our Nintendo was not working about two minutes ago in this video. We changed the directories. Now the artwork and the ROMs are coming from the right directories. One other way, if you go back to your Hyper PC, go to Attract, and go to Emulators, Atari 2600, you can just change all your drives right here in a notepad. So same with Nintendo. I actually missed one. I gotta change this to D. D, do you wanna save? Yes. And then Super Nintendo. Let's go ahead and get this over to the D. All right. Um, as far as Rocket Launcher, everything I've been looking at so far on the Rocket Launcher settings, it's all set to um, it's set to global. So a lot of these settings should just go with your whatever drive you're on. Um, this shortcut doesn't work because it's meant to do a shortcut to the H drive, but to get to this rocket launcher UI, you just go here, here, it's right here. It's just a shortcut for that. All right, let's go back into a track mode now and load a game. All right, so we're now in a track mode and we can start playing some games. So Atari 2600, let's go ahead and load a game here. Brainstorming, got the boot screen, Loading complete. extraction complete, ready, and it should boot the game. There you go. We are now playing. I am flying this airplane, and I just ran it into a... I have no idea what I can do. Do I have to hit the chickens? No. Don't hit the chickens. I don't get it. What am I supposed to do? Can I go in the barn? Um, okay, whatever that game's all about, have fun with that one. <laughs> let's go back, and then uh, let's head our way over to Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Let's, um, what game do I want? Not Mortal Kombat. What's the game I'm thinking of? Killer Instinct. Okay. okay. Killer Instinct. We load it up. Got a cool little start Loading screen. Complete. Hyper Pie. Ready. And there we go. By the way, start select does exit out of the game. And here we go. Let's go ahead and... The Riptor against Cinder. Bring it on. I am using an Xbox 360 controller. I do have this on my internal hard drive on my computer. But as I mentioned, the right way to do all this is put it on that external drive on the H drive. You don't do any of the messing around that I was doing. It would be simply a drag and drop from, uh, from your ROM packs. Oh, what did you, does that make him stronger? Ooh, there we go. Got something out of it. Trying to do some moves here. What are his moves? I have no idea what his moves are. Ooh. Not doing so well, huh? Whoever gets... I know you get to die twice in this game, but you have to, um... 
Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Now he got me that time. Okay, start select out. And we should get back into Hyper Pie 2. And then lastly, we did Nintendo on this video. So let's go over to Nintendo. So we did Super Nintendo, Atari. Oh, that's why I was in the little settings up here. Oh, see at the top you can go between... Right, let's just go to Nintendo then. Nintendo. Cool. Now we're back in Nintendo. Uh, bad dudes. Launch bad dudes. Loading complete. And there we go. 100%. Data East presents bad dudes. Right? There it is. There's bad dudes right in front of you. We can be Blade or Striker. President needs your help. Of course he does. Alright, I'm gonna quit. Alright, you get the point. So this is uh, Project Hyper Pi 2 for the computer. A lot, a lot of fun stuff. Um, you can change the views with your Y button on your controller. Uh, whatever you set your B button to is back. Whatever you set your A button to is forward. Um, hit tab on your keyboard brings you to the configure menu. That's where you're going to find a lot of your stuff you want to get access to. You can also access a lot of that on the file system that I've showed you earlier on the video. It runs so much more better on the computer than it does on Raspberry Pi 3. It is super significant. However, I love my little Raspberry Pi 3 and so when it comes to the computer now you got to now you're competing with LaunchBox and LaunchBox and Hyperspin are both really really capable systems now the fact that this is free kind of takes the cake for me right there that's a pretty big bonus uh, but do keep in mind those are kind of the competing uh, brands for the PC emulation it's beautiful, it's glorious, it runs better than the Pi 3, but to me, I would probably, in all practicality, have HyperPi on a Pi 3, and probably have LaunchBox on a PC, personally, but that's just what I think. I do want to say, though, that all the complaints I hear about the Pi 3 version of HyperPi are pretty much resolved in this one. The only complaint I get is, a lot of people don't like how flashy HyperPi looks, but I mean, remember, we can change these views as I'm changing them right now. And there's so many different views to, to go from. So I can see where the music could piss you off or get you upset. That I, I can't have a solution for you for. That's simple. But as far as like the viewing and all the videos and stuff, there's definitely a way to make it your own. There's a lot of customization involved here. All right, so without getting into a long, long rant, um, I love it. The PC version gets an A compared to the A- I gave for the Pi 3 version. But in all practicality, I'm more likely to use it in a Pi. I know that sounds totally ridiculous, but that's what I'm saying. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.